untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Pretty sweet rare with showdown. Which I'm gonna take Basalt Ravager, one of the better uncommons. Pretty easy to build around whether you're, you know, playing an aggressive red deck with a bunch of uh, Berserkers or a blue red giants deck or even a more controlling deck with a couple wizards. And anything else in the pack? Frostbite's decent. That's about it. The uncommons can also be good in a late game. So if we take Showdown, we're probably going to be a good Rune Crown deck, since we're going to end up with lots of cheap creatures, equipment, and if we take Rune Crown early, we can prioritize runes, which are usually not too hard to pick up, at least one or two. Other options... There's a Feed the Serpent, which doesn't go that well with the Showdown. Tormentor's Helm we can probably wheel. Craven Hulk's not that great in the Red Aggressive deck, so... I am a big fan of the Axe Guard Armory. I remember the previous red-white deck we drafted. This card definitely overperformed, although we did have multiple copies of Bounding Gold to search up. But yeah, we can take the Armory and prioritize Bounding Gold. There's Fearless Pup, Raider as cheap red creatures we wouldn't mind having to then equip. Uh, not the biggest fan of Spectral Steel, but can have its moments. But I'll take an Armory. Another Feed the Serpent kind of hurts to see, but I do like Goldmaw Champion, and then the two Dwarves here are also quite good. I guess they're all Dwarves. Uh, I'll go with the Goldmaw. Alright, decent pack for us. Best card overall might be Behold, but... Between Firewalker and Raider, we've got some nice options for the aggressive deck. I don't think Raider's, you know, as good as it may appear, unless we get a very dedicated boast deck. But it is still, you know, an above average 2-drop for sure. Not too difficult to get one counter on him. So I think I'm going to prioritize a cheaper card. Just to keep the curve nice and low. Alright, um... Gotta decide between Guardian and Carve. Usually don't end up playing the vehicles since equipment and vehicles kind of clash with each other. If you have too many vehicles and too many equipment, you don't have anything to crew the vehicles or wear the equipment. I'll go with the Guardian. It's definitely a fine card. Also better in slightly more controlling builds. And nothing wrong with the Starnheim Courser, especially if we end up with a couple artifacts and uh, enchantments to play on cheap. I remember when we had two Coursers in play and ended up spending what was like 8 mana with only 4 or 5 lands in play. Also works with our Showdown. Nothing here that I'm really looking for. Wings is a pretty weak trick, although sometimes you'll play it. Could take a Valor. Or we could take a Gates, but it's double blue to activate. I mean, we could still be blue-white and maybe Splash Showdown, so maybe I should still take Gates on the off chance that we kind of pivot here. Although, I would much prefer to be uh, Reds, since it also makes our Armory much better. But I don't think Valor's such a loss that I guess taking Gates is okay. But we're probably only going to play one of the two lanes, whichever deck we end up with. So we're looking for runes, we're looking for cheap creatures, two drops especially. Fearless Pup will do. Wears equipment quite nicely. Boast creature for Frenzied Raider, so we can go turn 1 pup, turn 2 Raider, turn 3 Boast, and hit for 6. And I guess we can speculate on a Giant Ox in case we get like 2 Oxen, Triple Plow, or 
Triple Ox Double Plow. Triple Ox Double Plow is probably the preferred configuration, since Ox at least still wears equipment. So not the most exciting first pack. Would love to pick up a Bounding Gold to search up with Armory as well. And we're a bit lacking in the creature department, but it's a start. Reinforcements isn't bad if we end up with more equipment, since we'll get multiple creatures to potentially equip. I'll take it over to Steel. And then we can also be on the lookout for the two mana pick equipment. So it looks like we're kind of settling into red as opposed to blue. So gates can probably go as well. All right, second pack. We opened nothing too exciting. I don't think I'm splashing for Cardur. So it's Courser versus Alpine Meadow. I guess another Courser. Courser definitely kind of overperforms sometimes against some of the greedier decks that don't have many reach or flying creatures. But mana fixing, even in an aggressive deck, is always welcome since the limited mana bases are usually quite poor. Alright, gotta take the Bounding Gold here to go with our Armory. And then we can hope to wheel something out of this between Meadow, Raider, Shieldmate, Reinforcements and Battle Shield Warrior. I'm sure we can get something on the wheel. Easy Demon Bolt. Man, this pack must have been stacked to still have Demon Bolt and Packmate in it. Probably the two best commons in the set. Alright, so this pack is definitely looking better. Just need to make sure we find a rune at some point. Alrighty, so there's a Colossal Plow. Um, we have one Ox so far. One ox and one plow doesn't do anything, but if we get two of each, then we can start talking. Otherwise, I could take Master Scald, which is quite synergistic with Showdown of the Scalds, which I don't mind. Yeah, I mean, if it's meant to be, we'll probably wield the Colossal Plow anyway, if no one wants it. I've forced Colossal Plow a few too many times and been disappointed, so... If we get it, we get it. If we don't, we don't. Here I don't mind Usher of the Fallen. It's either that or Valkyrie, but our curve is pretty high already, so I would like to pick up more 1 and 2 drops. And Usher is kind of a 1 drop and a 2 drop at the same time. There's also Divine Gambit as kind of a late game removal spell, which could be okay in a deck like this. But I uh, think we still value the Usher. And then Run Amok could also be a fine trick to get later if we don't get more equipment. Always kind of a balance between pump spells and equipment in the deck. And then now take a Berserker. Passing some good removal, Feed the Serpent goes by, but so it goes. Where are my two drops at? Alright, there's a Goldfein pick, and then there's some four drops with Valkyrie and Braggart. I think I'm still leaning Gold Vein pick just because we have double Courser that can connect pretty easily, makes the pick only cost one mana, and it makes our future cheaper creatures better as well. Although now that we take the pick we definitely want to prioritize uh, the one and two drops even more. And I guess we'll take a Helm and then we're kind of good on equipment and we just need some two drops. When I say two drops I don't mean Vault Robber, but uh, anything that has at least two power. I guess I can take a Scorn Effigy which I can at least spend my turn two foretelling over Spectral Steel. I mean, Spectral Steel does have a little bit going for it with double Courser, but if they kill Courser, then our deck doesn't do much anymore. Alright, we wield the Shieldmate at least. So 
So someone else is probably drafting the same deck since we haven't seen many of the staples of the aggro deck, like the 2 mana 2 2 lifelink, for instance, which we wouldn't mind. Take another Master Scald. Don't know if I'll play two. Sure, another thing we can foretell on turn two potentially. Although unlikely to make the final cut, is my guess. Alright, last pack. Need some more two drops. And maybe a second Bounding Gold would be nice. Well, I'll take a Demon Bolt. Seems pretty straightforward here. Something else we can spend our turn to foretelling. There's my Bounding Gold, another stacked pack with pack made as well. And then hope to wheel a Raider. Another Corsair could be fine too. Alright, now we just want cheap creatures. We did not wield the previous Colossal Plow. But a Battlefield Raptor looks good when we have a couple equipments to put on it. Uh, this is not a great deck for Iron Verdict since we're going to be attacking most of the time, so the opponent's creatures are not going to be tapped for the most part. Run Amok, also okay, but we already have three equipments. And then I guess something else we really want is a couple runes to go with the various equipments, especially the uh, Rune Crown. Still haven't seen a single rune go by. Another Rune Crown, but this time I'm going to take Story Seeker as one of the better two drops. Raven Wings could also be serviceable, although we already have Double Courser as flying creatures, so don't think we need to prioritize it. Alright, let's get some runes here. Usually Rune of Speed goes pretty late, but we've kind of established that there's most likely someone else drafting a similar deck, so they might be interested in those runes as well. Otherwise we'll have to cut the Rune Crown, and then we still have a gold vein pick and a tormentor's helm. Would we consider an off-color rune? Probably not. Unless I have a way of discarding it like the the raider at two mana so that we can discard it if we uh, happen to draw it. I think I need to take the pup. Kaios Onslaught can also have its moments. Uh, it is better in I think green whites where you might have bigger creatures to give double strike to. But it can definitely be a blowout and win the game out of nowhere. But again, we just want more cheap stuff. Alright, and now Raider looks good with double pop. And don't think this matters too much at this point. We're probably not going to get any runes. Would I play the Death Touch rune and maybe speculate on a Sulphur's Mire? Eh, seems unlikely. But I guess we already have Guardian not gonna play two. And already a Valor not gonna play two, so might as well. Alright, no Death Touch rune, but we got some nice ones here with a Forge Master and another Champion. So we're gonna cut Crown, since we're not gonna get any runes. And then... Whenever another non-token creature control dies. Yeah, I think I'm leaning call over another Helm or Champion, although it's kind of close. Yeah, our second pick, Rune Crown, didn't work out, sadly. Just take some uncommons for the Vault at this point. Alright, we got a rare. I don't think I'm playing Run Amok, or am I? Uh, I guess I am. Now that we cut the Rune Crown, there's probably room for one more pump spell. And it is quite good with Fearless Pup and Raider. Uh, I could play Raven Wings now. Also makes my call a bit better. Alright. So, let's have a look at this pile. So in terms of equipment, we have Helm, Wings, Pick, a couple 1-drops, ended up with a reasonable number of 2s, double Bounding Gold, double Demon Bolts, so we've got good removal, 
Oracle can go, Effigy can go, Carve can go, Reinforcements I can still see myself playing, probably going to play one Master Scald at most, and then Guardian I can also take it or leave it, so I'll probably leave it then. So do we want to play Master Scalds? So what does this do for us? Exile a creature in order to return artifact or enchantment from our graveyard to our hand. So it's good if somehow Bounding Gold falls off. It's good if they can somehow destroy my equipment, but it's mostly good with Showdown of the Skulls. And then we could potentially cut a land as well. Pretty evenly split in terms of colors. Also looking at the early game, pretty split between red and white. So I guess I could cut a plane since we have armory. And then play this. Demon Bolt we can also foretell, so that's another cheap card. Yeah, this looks okay. We have a decent number of mana sinks, so 16 lands I think is fine. We have double boast here. This can boast. Then we have the Gold Maw Champion. That's another way to spend our mana. Three equipment to move around. And then armory to activate, so... We have a decent number of ways to spend mana in the late game still. Alright, maybe the Rune Crown plan didn't quite work out, but we ended up with a pretty solid looking deck. Solid curve, good removal between double Demon Bolt, double Bounding Gold. Nice mix of equipment and an armory to surge them up, and then of course the cherry on top here, a showdown of the Skulls, which is by far our most powerful card. Alrighty. Got a fine hand. Could use an extra land or two to set up our showdown. Alright, third land for boast and then Pum the Raider could also be quite nice. Opponent already has two snow lines. I think we'll go with the shield mate here. And then I might bound in gold the priests, since that also removes the activated abilities. Pick is interesting. Opponent stuck on two lines. Yeah, I think I bound in gold here. They have a response. Could be a bounce spell. Although, never mind, this is naming black. Yeah, not sure what they could have here. Ah, frostbites. Fair enough. Next turn, we can either pick equip or play raider. Or do both. Pick equip, play raider. And now that we have extra mana from pick, we can also leverage showdown much better. Path to the world tree, fair enough. So this is a demon bolt, my guess. Mm. Yeah, I guess we'll attack and then get our creature demon bolted armory showdown. We might not get full value from Showdown, but our curve is relatively low, so I've got high hopes. Well, I guess we can play Armory and next run Planes. Sadly, won't be able to combine Master Scald with Showdown, but I'll be able to play Corsair and Cole at least. Alright, so opponent's got three mana up. I guess I could start by equipping the token. And then Cole would also pump this up. I don't really want to put more counters on Corsair since it's already a premium threat by itself. I guess what we might do is equip token. 
Um, play call, put counter on Raider. And take it from there. Because call only pumps creature tokens, and that seems more relevant than the other part right now. And then... I guess I could pump Raider again here. Or I could pump Coal to diversify a bit more. So they've got something. Another Frostbite, perhaps. Yeah, just a Demon Bolt. Fair enough. But we have armory that can find more equipment. We've got the Raven Wings, so... I think we've got this one locked up, unless there's a Sweeper in our future. Alright, opponent goes digging. Well, opponent was stuck on two lands for one turn too many, and we drew showdown, which... Definitely pulled us ahead, so not too surprising results. All right, sweet. Pretty threat light, but can't really mulligan. We'll hit for two. The floodgates have already been opened. So hopefully we find a showdown or an armory at least, or maybe one of our other boast creatures that can make use of all our extra mana. A raptor is not exactly what I had in mind. Can shut down mana abilities with bounding gold, so no point in enchanting the ring. Ah, that's a fine target for bounding gold, even though the mirror lake can still copy it eventually. Yeah, this game would have looked a lot better if we had a 3-drop to apply more pressure with. Ooh, Sarulf. So let's read this one more time. So I think we'll just kill it now. Yeah, that was a good draw. Probably fine to keep land in hand, since they might be splashing skull raids. Who knows? Yep, yeah, there's a lindworm, our greatest enemy. Although luckily we have another answer here. Although Mirror Lake can copy it to gain for more life. So they make another Lindworm, go up to 9. Do I attack with everyone and boasts? They would probably block Berserker. Take 5, bang down to 4. It's definitely worth considering. And now with Helm, especially. Probably equip Usher the Fallen. Mm, 
then could move the equipment. Don't think it matters too much either way. Could play out my land in case we top deck showdown. That's the one reason. Alright, hopefully they're out of lindworms. Alright, Burkstrider is a good one. Locks down the flyer. Courser to draw. So now if I were to move the equipment to my token attack with all opponent falls to one. Or I could keep it on the Usher, since they're probably blocking it. And they would take two anyway. I get to boast play Courser. I think I like that. Or I can just play Courser and pass, which is also reasonable. Having them at one, I think, is worthwhile. If I Helm on token, they just take the two from the token and block my two other guys. And then I guess I equip Courser in case of a Crush the Weak. So they need to answer two flyers. Well, they did. Wasn't playing around that. I guess I'm regretting not moving the equipment and attacking with all now. Sure. All right, probably could have played that last turn a bit better. On the play, hmm, speculative hand that needs to draw a mountain. We have eight mountains we can draw, but if we don't find one pretty much within the next draw or two, it's a bit of a disaster. I need double red to activate armory, so that's probably not happening. And just going raptor plus champion feels a bit lackluster. I think I would keep this on the draw, but mulligan on the play. This is better. Turn one pop, turn two, probably a raider. I think we get rid of shield mates. And then hope to draw third land so we can maybe boast. I think I'm down to boasts. We'll see what they do. Fortels. Yeah, let's boast. Because if they play a pack mate, Story Seeker's probably not gonna have any good attack. Unless we want to demon bolt it right away. Story Seekers, so now I can still attack and they don't have any good blocks. I get to hit them for four. And then probably go Seeker Helm. Or I could go... Yeah, Seeker Helm looks good. Or I could boast again if I wanted to. And then I would hit them for seven down to six. But then if they remove Raider, it's not the best. If this is the fight spell, that's also an argument for demon bolting the seeker. But let's say they do have the struggle for Skemfar next turn. This would be a trade. They could eat a pup or they could eat my story seeker. But then I still get to untap, bolts, hit them again. Yeah, I think this is okay.
foretell keep up demon bolt also an option but if they have a different removal spell i just want to have an extra thread in play foretells another card are we struggling the pup we are so i'll take a land here hmm Champion's good, but I think I just Demon Bolt smash for five. So the best they can do here is probably Burkstrider or Double Spell. Turgris Lantern, that one we don't care about. And then I probably attack, play champion, don't want to equip in case I have a demon bolt. Alrighty, on the play, yeah I think I'm down. I get to usher, equip it with a pick to fix for red, and hope that works out. So I do think turn two we play the pick instead of boasting. Although it depends what we draw in the meantime. Oh no. Alright. Raptors, interesting. So there's no real point in playing pick when they can just block. So I could attack, offer the trade, play Raptor. Or I can just boast. I guess I also don't hate boasting here. Berserker. Hmm, sadly no land. So now we face another interesting decision whether to play Raptor or pick. Can even foretell Demon Bolt, although that doesn't seem as useful. So if I draw a planes, I would be happier playing Raptor. If I draw Mountain, then hmm, it's still interesting, because I can expect my opponent to also potentially enhance their own Berserker, so 2-2 doesn't necessarily get a chance to attack next turn. But I guess we'll be mana efficient. If they do let me attack, I would get to maybe empty out and play some one drops. Ooh, Sword of the Realm. Alright, and we drew Mountain. So I could just tap out for Berserker. Um, there's also something to be said for killing Berserker that the opponent has before they get the chance to equip it. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to attack on the ground anymore. So I guess I could equip with a pick, hit for two, and foretell. And if they equip, we can kill it. If not, we'll probably hang on to our treasure. And hope they don't have another pump spell, which there's not too many, but there's definitely a few. Uh-oh. Well, at least the equipment doesn't resolve. But they do get a token here. So it could have been worse. So now I attack, they probably trade. Playing Berserker doesn't accomplish much. So I probably attack, they trade, and then I go Raptor Pup, move the equipment to the Raptor. Ah, 
Alright, a sword on Berserker. And our point's still attacking. So do they have another combat trick here? Should I have put the equipment on the pup instead? I think I still block. Sure, they get their Berserker back, but... So I guess it must mean they have another trick. I mean, they get a zombie. But they have to replay Berserker, they have to respend the mana equipping, so... I don't know if this is a... a great attack if they don't have a trick. But I also can't really take four each turn. So I guess I'll block. Alright. Yeah, we can play a second main Berserker, I, I guess. Yeah, leaving a two-part first striker on defense has its merits, for sure. But I also want to get in the damage while I can, since if they answer my flyer, we're going to struggle to deal any damage since the ground's going to get stalled. So we'll take the four. Ooh, Ascent of the Worthy. All damage that would be dealt is dealt to the Berserker, so... I guess we're not uh, interested in trading then. And eventually they'll get back a creature. Ooh, wings is great. So I can wings, equip, berserker, hit for six, move equipment to the pup. So they targeted the zombie. So if I block Berserker, that's not going to be great for me. So I just block the zombie then. And then now... Probably move pick to Raptor, smash with the Flyers. Could also attack with Pup to make them block. They'll get a zombie. But it's a kind of a force block if they don't have removal, which, you know, they have two cards in hand, they could easily have some interaction. So I think just playing a Master Skull is gonna be better. And then I'll have two flyers next turn, so either one of them hitting them is lethal. Alright, GG's.
All right, GG's. All right, fine hand. Got the one, two, three, four curve. It got even better. Double spells, I think Berserker gets the nod here. And next turn maybe go Usher plus Fortel. Start by attacking. Master Scald is going to meet Bounding Golds. Let's hope to dodge the worm. Alright. That one's pretty good too. And Bounding Golds, not a great answer, but Demon Bolt sure is. Send these two. They could give their token lifelink with their lands. Well, there's a Lindworm. But we've got another Bounding Gold. Please die, opponent. <laughs> Valkyrie, sure. And a rune of sustenance to give lifelink. Yeah, they're not giving up. So, do we have lethal in some way? If I just send a pup, they chump with the token. What happens if I attack with everyone? Because they have to block the pup, otherwise first strike kills them. So if I attack with everyone, they would probably put token on pup, Valkyrie on Berserker. And then I get to hit them for two. It forces a trade. And then opponent goes to two. And then I'm gonna go Story Seeker plus Reinforcements, maybe. Yeah, seems good. Could also Boasts and Reinforcements, but I think Story Seeker's probably better, just make a 2 2 so that it. Is lethal because their point is at two here, or will be at two. This way, they don't get to leverage their stronghold either. All right, and our point finally gives up. Yeah, I mean, I gotta keep. Showdown's just too good to pass up, and we can foretell early. Alright, looks like some sort of mirror match, so... Showdown's definitely gonna do the heavy lifting this game. Alright, another Berserker starts. 
Bounding Gold is going to be the better answer than Demon Bolt is, so I think I still have reinforcements. So pump plus reinforcements looks good, or I could keep up demon bolts in case they equip. I think we'll go with the reinforcements plus pump. And then next turn is probably going to be a removal turn, and then turn 5 maybe showdown. I'll take it. A raider to draw. So I could bound in gold, then they still get to move the helm to the other berserker potentially. Could go berserker plus foretell demon bolt after attacking with just a pup, because I imagine they'll just uh, take it. Otherwise, I could boast and kill berserker even though they get a zombie. Depends how aggressive we want to get, but I don't think we need to be too aggro given showdown, so we can kind of take our time. All their opponent is stuck on two, so pressuring them while they're behind is also not a bad idea. Problem is, if I Bounding Gold next turn, they move Helm, they have a 3 3 on defense, and Demon Bolt is then a little awkward. So, start by attacking. And I could still wait an extra turn on Showdown. Take three. Opponent's being pretty aggressive, but I guess it makes sense when they can still equip the defensive Berserker here. Right, opponent passes with two lands up, so they might have the Demonic Gifts here, but I can just Bounding Gold the untapped Berserker. Which I don't hate. I still have Demon Bolt up, Smash, and then I don't quite get to do anything else, but we get to keep up Demon Bolt. If I were to just attack with Pup and Raider, I could boast. If they have Demonic Gifts, I can Demon Bolt in response. I guess I can just attack with everyone boasts and then have Demon Bolt in response, that, that feels better to me. And the opponent has to make the first move when it comes to Demonic Gifts. So now I just get to boasts. And if they gift, I Bolt in response. All right, that worked. Maybe. And now Bounding Gold lines up well against Berserker. And then Showdown when empty-handed is the best feeling. If they hit their third land. Yeah, I think it's still bound plus boasts. They might have a village rights, perhaps, but we'll see. They might just demon bolt here, and they didn't want to foretell to make it too obvious. Yep, there's the bolt. But they're still at 5, no blockers. And my hand's not that bad either. Alright. Well, we drew Showdown in a few games, but didn't even have to cast it. So we got the clean sweep. <laughs> 
yeah, Boros Aggro can be a pretty strong deck, especially if you face some greedy decks that maybe keep speculative hands. Let's claim our prize and crack some packs. And lots of gems. Gotta take the pack mate. I'll take pack mate over 20 gems. Oh, is it a wild card? Is it a rare? It's gotta be a wild card since it's yellow. So it's not a mythic and I've got all the rares. Oh, never mind. It can be a mythic. Nico. I learned something new today about opening packs. Oh, so I guess it's either a wild card or a mythic. And this time it's a wild card. All right, always nice to open those. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.